Hello, and welcome to our show, Conversation with Priya. Today, our guest is a very special woman, Feza Paveen. She is the founder and executive director of Open Source Network, an entity that focuses on bridging the gap between product and product, product and people, people and people, through events and festivals. She is also the country director for 62nd International Film Festival, a global platform for young minds to promote storytelling through films. Also, she is a country lead for a campaign, Women Will, an initiative of Google. The initiative is focused on towards creating economic opportunity for women by connecting them to the online world and tool to make the most of it. Ms. Praveen is a former U.S. Embassy Youth Council member in 2014, a business enthusiast. Ms. Meza Praveen is passionate for event curation and traveling, which in her opinion is a way to connect people and find a common ground amongst all. So help me to welcome our friend from Nepal, Feza Puvi. I'm your host, Priya Mishra. Thank you for joining in. Hi, Feza. Thank you for joining in today. Thank you for accepting my request. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's a great opportunity, definitely, and it's a pleasure. Thank you. So how, like, let's start my first question to you. You're very young. Um, You've been doing in one in event industry, uh, very interesting, you know, moments. Uh, I can hear from your stories. How, how do you bridge the gap between the various stakeholders, considering the current industry is like right, right now, uh, is struggling, I would say? Um, the best way of bridging these gaps is uh, doing events uh, through which... You know, for example, the, the kind of events that I uh, do or who are the target audience of my events. And uh, like if I'm looking for sponsors, who are my sponsors? Uh, do my target audience and the sponsor's target audience matter or not? Hmm. Is the first thing that I look forward for whenever I organize my kind of events, right? So uh, sponsors being one of the biggest stakeholders of my events. Yeah. They actually, uh, so that that's one of the biggest intersection point for us uh, mm -hmm. to go forward with. Then uh, who are coming in? Like uh, if I'm organizing a gig uh, in terms of like a concert uh, with musical performance or if I'm organizing a, you know, shiry gig or if I'm actually getting uh, all these Hina artists together uh, for my event uh, or I'm or I have a stall, food selling stall. So are my target customers going to eat or are they going to enjoy that specific performance or not? Mm -hmm. uh, these are the few points that I look forward for and then I go forward for it. So whenever I organize any event, uh, the biggest uh, uh, point I always look forward for is the uh, intersection of target audience. Right. So that that means that when you are um, communicating with your different stakeholders, um, you do uh, consider more of a uh, intent of the customer and how they are actually gonna like this. Like, I mean, of course, it is a long discussion process, especially when it, it is right. a social event. Um, when it is the corporate event, uh, how you gonna look into what all the elements you actually go in detail about it. So. Um, First, uh, when it comes to corporate events, I think the f first thing that always comes into the mind is uh, the organization's mission and vision. Uh, is the event actually lined up with that particular thing or not is one of the biggest questions. Yeah. And are we going according to the ethics of the organization, right? Uh, like, for example, if uh, I'm talking about my organization itself, if I'm organizing an after party, of the event or for example i'm organizing a team meeting or something like that you know my organization ethic believes is that we're not going to um, uh, use alcohol in any of our sponsors list or we're not going to take any support from them yeah. so it does not make sense if i'm organizing if i'm taking alcohol in my meetings mm -hmm. right because i've already abandoned that part Mm -hmm. But if uh, there is another like a Coca-Cola as a brand who has collaborated with me in different events, I bring that and, you know, I, instead of alcohol, if I am bringing uh, Coca-Cola in the uh, in meeting, that it means like I'm 
actually staying in the ethic as well and then uh, also uh, going forward in the same so it's like uh, not diverting uh, uh, just for money or just for uh, fun it's like sticking to what you say as an organization and believing and taking things forward sure so actually when did you started all that i should have asked that question first <laughs> when did you started all that <laughs> so i started uh, events when i was in my bachelor's uh, i when i was studying uh, mm-hmm. that was back in 2012 so uh, i used to do college events then i started doing events outside college our college used to bring opportunities for us uh, different uh, event management companies used to hire us for their events you know as yeah. volunteers as a, um, a team member then i started uh, uh, organizing events outside the college uh, in collaboration with other people mm-hmm. and then in 2014 i started uh, along with my friends we started a company a social enterprise from where we used to organize uh, events and also uh, events that are mostly you know film festivals and leadership camps and talk shows we used to organize that kind of events Great. and we also used to do uh, csr projects uh, where we used to collect books through events uh, we used to donate those books again but uh, with the time passing uh, uh, we our team member just got separated because of different circumstances and i personally as an individual uh, was leading the whole organization for year, a year mm-hmm. from 2016 to 2017 mm-hmm. now during that period of time i realized that whatever my personal ethics are uh, it's not 100% what this organization is looking forward for yeah so what i did was i just uh, like uh, how other of my friends uh, left the company i also uh, resigned from that organization and we closed down that company and in 2017 i started a profit for profit event organizing company because right. earlier it was a social enterprise and we had like legalities of five other people signing in so but then those people were not working in the organization so i was like today it's like it does not mean anything but maybe after 5 years or 10 years down the line this is definitely going to bring issues so it's just better that uh, we finish this topic right now and then start um, my organization as a whole uh, which will be the sole proprietorship organization very interesting and i did it from 2017 and um, clearly you are very passionate mm-hmm. about event so in that event you know curation and travel took a hit due to the lockdown and social distancing rules do you yeah. think the industry has overcome these challenges and is ready to move on to the next chapter or we are still on the struggle phase definitely on the struggle phase because um, even if things have opened up uh, especially when it comes to context of nepal uh, we have also cinemas or theaters open up now uh, with social distancing we have uh, farmers market and everything going on uh, we uh, we see domestic travel happening a lot but yeah. uh, for event organizing company the clubs are actually open right there is nothing called social distancing but and we see now and then in social media how people are criticizing it you know so for me as a person as an individual who has been so passionate about traveling and um events i i personally want to stay uh, low key this time i don't want somebody to blame my event for the health that the person is in you know and yeah. uh, since my event is all about mass mm. um my events are like 1000 to 2000 3000 5000 6000 people attending the event so sure. it's a risk mm. right and uh, mm. somebody who wants to come to the event that person is going to think twice should i go or not somebody mm. who attends the event uh, is going to think again am i in a safe zone or not Yeah. somebody who comes back uh, from the event is again going to think that oh my god i was in that event did i get corona you know <laughs> all these questions yeah. are going to arise so much that and even if somebody has not got corona attending my event the blame is going to come to my event of course right? and it, so it will better, be too much too much to discuss yeah, overall and too find much out of, too much of mental pressure yeah. rather than the enjoyment of the event yeah, so yeah. it's better not to do any event right now Hmm. that's yeah. the whole reason i have like starts 
just kept uh, myself in a low key position and i'm like okay i'm just going to wait for things to be normal and i'll bounce back it's not a big deal mm. so uh, uh, clearly no it sounds like that nepal is uh, of course not ready and i'm i'm pretty sure i'm in australia and we we are still not ready for very big event here um we we are yeah. doing a small event here and there with the limited restrictions and um all masks and other options are coming we are getting little list clusters here and there a government is doing very well uh, controlling the overall scenario but i'm sure it's mm-hmm. not a time for any country um to go in a mass scale i believe um yeah. You, yeah yeah i'm sure you would you agree on that of course of course yeah. that that's the reason that i have like um stayed uh, home i'm not uh, organizing any event i've, I've just uh, closed my eyes towards events basically yeah. yeah having said that we would love to get back to the events we would love to see the, of course the travel is the most important thing out of that whole event mm. musical and other stuff like mm. that it's so important for human you know we we are so used to of that social events and all it's very important but I would like to ask you more about your women entrepreneurship has been lagging mm-hmm. in the market like Asia especially in country like Nepal do you think this is right or are there any changes happening in that area what's your view on it I think women entrepreneurship um, has uh, boomed up in Nepal as well I think it was there from day one it's just that people never talked about it yeah. and uh, we uh and even if uh, women were actually running businesses and um earning uh money was actually not there because uh, for someone like me who has traveled uh, quite a places i saw that most of the women are working they are the ones who are running all those small scale uh businesses at the roadside they are the ones who are doing uh, you know uh the restaurant business uh and then yep. they are the ones yep. who are selling in that small shop uh, they are the ones who are bringing vegetables from their farms and selling it in the road when we are traveling so these things were happening but it's just that no one was uh, appreciating them as entrepreneurs or somebody uh, who's doing business or somebody who is earning money because mostly all the money that used to get accumulated used to go to the men right so things have uh, changed uh, past few years and in cities uh, uh, we have uh, realized whenever there is a panel discussion and there are only male characters uh, sitting on the chair we uh, we have started calling them manals you know yeah. and we the social media has actually started uh, taking a step uh, forward towards that same path though. Mm. so uh, whenever we see a poster where there are only men um, there's no hesitant uh, uh, and we just uh, write that we hope to see few more women in the poster in days to come you know i, I personally do that i i just yeah. write it out there yeah so, yeah yeah it's changing it's definitely changing a lot of opportunities are given the bank is being really supportive uh, there are a lot of trainings happening around there are a lot of startup boot camps going on mm. a lot of markets focused towards women again so it's actually uh, getting better the scenario is getting better and uh, the struggle of as a as an entrepreneur is always going to be there but uh, if you say as a woman it's also because of the social norms actually mm. it's like uh, most of the women they finish their bachelor studies uh, or they do masters and they are married off they don't have that pressure of earning money right yeah. unlike men uh, whenever they finish their bachelor the families actually start uh, complaining that you should you should start earning money you should start doing this you should be have to take care of your family that kind of pressure is not there to the female yeah. so uh, they complete their studies and again there is this huge um, you know stigma about age that if you are above 25 and you are like if you cross 30 you can't be pregnant and this and that you know so people are afraid of those stigmas and they are married off and then once they uh reach to their in-laws house a lot of women get to their household work and they start supporting the 
uh, family business. So um, most of the time, these women have like two opportunities. Either they go back to the job that they were in or they actually uh, start supporting their family business or their husband's business, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the third thing which we are talking about entrepreneurship is mm-hmm. actually not there. Because uh, what happens is if if you have a business right before you get married, right mm-hmm. so it's like you go after marriage also you'll continue that now after getting married you enter a house there are already businesses so the family is going to be like you know why don't you just uh, so start supporting the business why do you need to start a new one there are already yeah. so many things on the plate yeah. just eat that you know why do you need to add a few new uh, dishes yeah. to it it's that kind of thing so yeah. it's like uh, and also i think it depends upon the individual as a yeah, woman, yeah how are you raised i mean i always um, have um, you... believe that it's not just how um you know what society is enforcing it's a, a lot of individual choices comes and uh, yeah. maybe upbringing is a problem or the society culture itself is a problem the woman mentality also is not it's also enemy of themselves in terms of when it comes to the yeah. you know um so yeah. uh, we we all have to step up for you ourselves and come to to the point but i am more keen to know uh, that you initiative you are working with the women will right what is what is happening in that space i know you are working very closely it's an initiative of google um you you want to uh, tell something to our audience about it what's happening in that space so women will is actually a initiative of google from where we provide uh, free training programs and mentorship to women entrepreneurs and any woman who wants to be financially independent uh, on that same regard we have been organizing a lot of events uh, uh, virtually and also in a close space where if any woman who is looking forward for mentorship or is any if anybody any woman is looking for some kind of support i am always there to help them so again because of this lockdown things did uh, change a bit and uh, we could not organize physical events but yeah whatever we have been uh, uh, capable of we have been providing back to the society sure. it's a voluntary thing yeah and it's more yeah. of a we are trying to support more of a tool towards and more digitalization or what's the main right. motive of it uh the main motive is making the women get back to work uh making them financially independent making them uh, more confident uh, teaching them about simple things like how to sync their phone with their gmail you know just making them more capable on themselves making them more independent on any aspect of life very interesting so, so we do very core part trainings on negotiation we teach them uh, about communication we give them about trainings on digital very marketing so these things keep happening nice nice so yeah. through culture and religious aspects make a big difference in achieving universal connectivity uh, in and especially in nepal are, do you think it's like is there any big cultural difference between the youngers and olders and you know and when it comes to the teaching to the different generation how how do you mm. perceive how do you proceed to those people who are not ready you know i'm pretty sure younger generation is more well more welcoming to the modern technology and all and the older generation are uh, gonna be a very challenges many challenges due to like you know less exposure and all i believe so how do you overcome on those things i think lockdown played a very very important role in making the world more digitalized and making people understand the value of digitalization because uh, everything is now in the tip of our you know hands um, from getting groceries to uh, getting anything that we want to send money from one place to another uh, to buy tickets and everything uh, earlier my father my family we used to go and pay electricity bill uh, 
to you know a certain uh, government's agency and then we used to do that but now am i whenever the bill comes uh, that just goes and gives me the bill and i i pay that through my uh, wallet e wallet mm-hmm. right so these kind of uh, things have changed uh, like now he's like why is somebody needs to go from here to go there like wait for 10 15 minutes in the line and get the payment done just do it you know even if yeah. it's like 5 rupees extra just do it yeah because yeah, it's yeah. more easier now yeah yeah right to be no earlier it used to be like who is going to go and pay the bill there there used to be like a huge just question again you know like yeah. go and then somebody is feeling lazy and then you forget and everything but now it's not not like that yeah. so things like that do do happen and uh, uh, even if like during lockdown uh, the banks were not open and anything so whatever payment has to be done it used to be like through e wallets and everything and uh, this thing has actually made us more uh, confident as well i think because uh, uh digitalization is keeping you transparent as well like mm-hmm. earlier we used to go we used to wait uh, to get the statement of the bank we had to go to the bank and check what amount is there in the bank or uh, even if there somebody has taken out money we never knew about it but now it's actually very much practicable mm-hmm. people yeah. understand the value of it so there is half of the generation like the uh, the older generation half of them are actually open to technology well while half of them is not hmm. it's also uh, because of the working environment that you come from it's also yeah. because of the yeah. people you hang out with i think it's it's also depending on that yeah. some people value even 5 rupees but for some people it's like 5 rupees and paying extra for the convenience hmm. Hmm. right yeah. so it's that kind of that uh, yeah. that kind of environment Hmm, very interesting so the point here is that now where do you see women entrepreneurial growing in nepal and what's the future you can see in terms of business growth uh, for women in nepal i think nepal will be more um, nepal's gdp is going to rise once the women entrepreneurship is there in the market because um like if you see nepal has like 51% of women hmm. right and 49 of them is men yeah. uh, almost uh, half of the men earn money while yeah. maybe 5 to 10% only women earn money here yeah right. so yeah. rise in women entrepreneurship means rise in the economic standard of people mm-hmm. uh, of the individual of that particular woman along with that woman comes another maybe in average four to five people who will be working with that woman mm-hmm. so definitely um and as a woman leader what happens is mostly you going to hire women yeah because you understand the value right you understand uh, uh, the kind of scenario you understand the situations better mm-hmm. a lot of women they don't uh, become i think entrepreneur is also because they don't have role models up until now like yeah. um, if if you see you know a uh, lot of times what happens is we don't want to be the first one uh, it's uh, people uh, try to be try lot of people are like you know no 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 if even if it's like something like as random as uh, our teacher asking us a question like who will be the first one to give your homework or who's the one to first one to going to be reading a paragraph and everybody used to be hesitant you know and then uh, yeah our teachers right. used yeah. to force us you know ki, okay <laughs> to you particular person you just stand up and read that paragraph yeah. then later every everybody used to stand up and then see take the volunteer duty so it's the same thing i think in our case as well where we see a lot of women uh, entrepreneurs have not got enough media uh, mileage mm-hmm. and whatever these women are actually doing is uh, and also one thing that i've realized most of the women entrepreneur are social entrepreneurs they are not proper business entrepreneurs hmm hmm uh maybe because it's like they are only limited to those handmade stuffs which yeah. is again uh, and they're not selling the product as you know it's a very nice product they are selling it for the fact that it is made by all those underprivileged women yeah so why and when it comes to the men for example if a man is doing the same thing that person is not going to say that it's made by the underprivileged woman rather that person would actually sell it for the fact that the product is yeah a yeah. lot of time uh the 
work of line that uh, women choose are more emotionally driven uh, while men are mostly driven by the profit that product is going to bring in yeah, yeah. so if uh, we see according to the scenario mm-hmm. the according to the past uh, things that we have taken forward uh, most of the organizations here are which are uh, like just example like ngos most of them are led by women hmm. yeah right because it's more uh, of if you talk about big yeah. business yeah yeah if we talk about big business houses uh, big names who are billionaires who run big business houses hmm. we only see men hmm. we see the maybe uh maybe we just uh, see like for example just a simple example we talk about ambanis hmm. right we see the male carrot male of the ambanis are focused towards business while the female are talking about csr and foundations yeah as simple as that yeah right as simple they they, they being like I, i just took the example of india because in nepal also the scenario is the same hmm. right hmm. most of the men of the business houses are only seen in the uh, medias while the women are they are they choose to be in csr projects and while some women are there in the business sector it's not that completely they are not there but it's just that they the are not seen is very much. low the percentage is very low yeah the percentage okay. is very low right yeah. um so i think these are the factors which affect a lot i'm so sure things are changing and especially things are changing yeah. a lot in um, in nepal india is like already in that role right now um right. um because it, there was some of the jobs i have you you must have noticed uh, you, we haven't seen like two decades ago you will not see women in those jobs but now you can see it's right. like 20% 30% women are actually already there mm-hmm. you know, when i started my it career right. like 5 to 10 women percent women were there in the it now 50% women are itians now you know in india things are changing right. in terms of india i i have noticed and i'm pretty sure um mm. being a neighbor and the influence is very huge and uh, the culture yeah, yeah, is course. on a big difference so uh, mm-hmm. nepal is changing as well australians um and right. other part of the western world is also keep praising have been keep praising these women difference um, but it's still even in western uh, part of the world is a huge gap it still needs to be filled yeah um, in terms of, of in, in terms of the job job uh, picking up the job profile and also the salary mm-hmm. gap is is a huge debate which is right. not going to go any time soon looks like but interesting mm-hmm. points thank you so much for joining in it is Uh, an honor and uh, looking as a, such an, a young age you have been doing your achievements are you know really tremendous like you should really keep going i hope the industry will pick up soon and you will be shining will be seeing you around more uh, stay in touch to reach you out and anybody wants to organize the event uh, feza is the lady and uh, you should go to that <laughs> um but i'm you can always contact me over instagram uh, with the same name faiza parveen i'm always available there you can just uh, message me anytime yeah sure so all all the details will be given in the descriptions and um, her details on all social medias um, are available and you can reach her out thank you so much for joining in thank you feza for your time today thank you so much thank you so much for having me thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it and uh, like comment and subscribe if you haven't already done it to know more about us visit www.corporality.global and also you can find more about priya mishra is on priya.sydney